That's uh, right, Rob and Kev. Rob and Kev. You never seen us together before solo. You never seen us together before solo. That's true. This is the first time ever. This is true. Yeah. You been keep your distance or work keep with your comedy. Distance. Or... You didn't even pass us mics. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like it, it you was were that dangerous. early. You were that early. It was dangerous for you to pass us the mic. You were t- you were 2020. I was 2020 and 2021. I didn't pass you in 21. Maybe. I know 20. Maybe. We was like 20. It was like hey hey don't I get, even you y'all don't even get near my Kev. Mic. I know you. I know you watch ADD and you, <laughs> you're a big fan. And you know you know you feel like you know him. You don't. <laughs> don't don't get near. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> That's we got funny. Kev on stage. What's up? In the building. Does your people have a name? Uh, The Big Tippers. Big Tippers? Tip stands for The Inconsistent Podcast. Big Tippers. Yeah. 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 I wish the dab was still around, man. The dab? Oh, I love the dab, It was too man. easy. That's why I was right there. It was too easy. Hillary picked it up so man. quick. Man. <laughs> When that was a thing, I was right, right. Ooh, I right. felt so good about it. It was so it. easy. Ellen was like, "I oh, I could do that." That's the problem. That, it was too easy because the Dougie on on black dance skill spectrum. Yeah, the Dougie is a very difficult dance. Right, but the dab? in the eighties, only one person did the Dougie. <laughs> Dougie Fresh. Doug E. <laughs> yeah, but the dab. The dab. You could you could go right here. You could go arm up. The the dab was at its height to me before it had a name. Yeah. Once they put a name on it, its the, days were numbered. The clock starts ticking. Because then you can identify it. Then it's going in Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> it's going, they're doing it in When NFL it was dances. like that thing that yeah. people do sometimes, that's that's <laughs> when it was going. Because he, he, you didn't even know what to call it. You just had to show it like, no. Nah. You see what Cam Newton did? He was in the club. He was on stage. And then he did one of these. When the beat dropped, man, you had to see it. He did one of these. Yeah. The, the crowd went crazy, the man. The crowd went crazy. They started doing it. By the end of the night, everybody was doing it. <laughs> when I did Montreal, Clayton was doing the dab before it had a name. <laughs> And he was on stage, and I remember it like like we was, it was like like an after 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 yeah, party. Yeah. And I remember the pe- like the Canadian people was like, "Oh my God, these Americans, they're so creative," you know. And it was yeah. And man said the Canadians were like, well, "The Americans <laughs> did it again, they man. Did it again. We got a little sneak preview. Wait till football season, y'all see. Y'all gonna see. Oh man. Uh." Kev, I play Versace because recently <laughs> you were that's seen why. That's why. wearing a Versace shirt in the club, dreaming of those easy dabbing days. <laughs> Rob, it is the most on-brand video for me ever. Yeah. Let me, can I tell you what happened? I, I would love to know what happened. Okay, so... First, the Versace shirt. I had the Versace shirt. Versace. First, the item of clothing I was wearing. Yeah. No, Ver- I, I love that. Versace. I love that, that Kev out here getting money and showing people. He so, got that in him. So, yes. A little bit. But it wasn't even that. It was the theme for the weekend was like Vegas fly. Okay. So, you know, me and Melissa, we, you know what I'm saying? we okay. Fashion is very important to her. I wish I had known the location the whole time. Right. Now it's like you kind of need that just right. to be comfortable. Right, because otherwise me wearing that, is, it's, out, it's out of context. You in the desert. Right. It's hot. And people be wearing, people and in Vegas people, do too much. People in Vegas do too much and look at you crazy for being a normal. Exactly. Yeah. So we purposely, you know, I don't know if you know about the real real, but the real real it allows you to buy high quality fashion clothes and then you can sell them. Okay. And if you buy it and sell it within season, you almost basically just rented the shirt. So that shirt's oh. in the cleaners. It's going back to Versace. I, that I don't stay in my. Oh yeah, my this. wife put me on this. They be selling purses and that, stuff. Cause and, y'all be drippy. And, and then they be going right back. Oh. So I'm. Ba- it's it's almost renting. Because okay. you're never going to get what you paid for it, right. unless it's a purse. Right. But shirts wise, you're never going to get what you paid for. It. But if you sell it within that same season, within a month or two, they're like, "Oh snap, Versace shirt! They still got this available." If you spent like five hundred, for example, you might get four twenty five. 
back. So don't, I'm like, oh, it's don't like tell me this, Kev. I'm telling don't you. Don't tell me because I got a bunch of stuff and I don't know where to sell it. It's big business. For I'm real, like, real, it's big business. If, if I sell it for what y'all going to buy it for, I'm going to cry. But it ain't GameStop prices. <laughs> Yeah. Because you can still sell it good. Okay. It's legit price. If it's in good shape, it's legit. Mm. Okay, so that's Can you thing. jump on a real real and be like, hey, I know I didn't get this from y'all, but no, I got No, they it. buy everything. Oh. They buy shirts. I sold Jordans. Oh. I sold, I sold all, you know, the, the fours I thought were good for me. They they hurt my feet. Oh, like no, cinema. no, no. In 1989, Nike had beef with the pinky toe. <laughs> Every <laughs> Nike from 1989 is designed to to test your Man. pinky toe to the limit. The Jordan Four, the Trainer Three, yes, uh, uh, even the yeah. ones. I don't know how he's playing basketball in those. Right. There's nothing. There's nothing to hold your foot in there. Good. He wanted to be the greatest. He wanted to be the greatest. Forget. He wanted to be the greatest. That's the thing. These these shoe companies are not testing Mm-mm. their stars. No. Back not. then, Nike was like here. Take yes. the flattest shoes you can <laughs> and try to get some incentives. <laughs> try to get try to get rookie of the year in these, buddy. Oh my God. So I we basically rent the clothes, mm-hmm. essentially. Mm-hmm. And it was Friday. Okay. So, um I had worked that day. I've, I hiked five miles, walk five miles, not hike, but I walked five miles that morning. Okay. Come back, take a in shower. Vers- oh, all right. No, it was regular clothes. <laughs> regular, <laughs> regular clothes. <laughs> I, I do my five mile walk, mm-hmm. so I'm, you know that's physical activity. Yeah, come back, take a shower. I'm I'm on a Zoom for an hour and a half. Okay, I'm on another Zoom for an hour. Yeah, we got to go to Best Buy to get a ring light. Got we to get stuck in traffic. Yeah, because of the F one. Mm-hmm. Vegas residents were not happy about F one. By the way, cab driver was cussing Vegas smooth out. Oh, so you wasn't there for the F one? No, we was just there for my boy birthday party. Okay, F one just happened to be that weekend. Yeah, very black also. We get mm-hmm. what, what is the why all the racist hey, stuff hey, is happening? What, why y'all? What y'all say about race? Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. That one. All right, this is some European racing. Yeah, I ain't worried about it. So the the traffic caused me to miss premium nap time. Mm-hmm. So from a party from eight until I got to have a nap, Rob. I got I'm you. The, I'm forty plus. I yeah. cannot just go from eight to midnight plus because I go to bed at nine o'clock regularly. Okay, regularly. All right. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Regularly. I'm in the bed by nine. So you would have missed living single at the time. Like what? (laughs) It's over. Like you yeah, no New York undercover for you. No. (laughs) When Eddie got blown up, they would have told me about it the next day. Yeah. Eddie got what? (laughs) Wouldn't have known. Uh, I wasn't always like this, but at this part of my age, Mm because I get up, I work out, take my kids to school, I got to go to bed at nine. Yeah. This was like eleven fifty six. And the party was in, in like 15 minutes from that, we was all gone. So I'm, I'm, and I was wearing Versace shoes. Okay. Now, you might not know this about me, Rob. I got bad feet. So I wear custom insoles. I know you're particular about your shoes. I do know that. I, I didn't know the feet were bad. Let me show you. But I didn't, I didn't know that you have like, like, you know. Kanye, okay. I, know, I know what we wow. said. Wow. But wow. the technology in his <laughs> shoes is great for bad feet. In addition to the Adidas <laughs> Boost technology, <laughs> I got my custom insoles that I got to put in my shoe. Okay. This is how I get around. You, you can't put this in a hard bottom, Rob. They okay. don't fit. Okay. So I, I know that you wear Yeezys, but I, I would have never put it out there for the world. I Listen, <laughs> I know he said some things. I had these prior. Yeah. This is a medical condition thing. I got you. I, I already paid for them. Yeah, that's true. I can't true. sell them. They're I worn. I don't know what to do with mine. I, you, you can't sell them on the real real. Can't sell them on you the real sell, real. They too be real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can't sell them on the real real. Yeah. There's certain things they don't take. Too yeah. worn or Kanye stuff. They're not taking it on the real real. Right. So in addition to being tired, my feet were mm-hmm. screaming. And women, can I look into the camera mirror? Is this my camera? Women, I want to apologize to you. I didn't truly understand what y'all was going through with the shoes hurt your feet thing, the heels, the boots. I didn't get it until I start having feet issues. Mm. Now I know why y'all I used to make jokes. Oh, they packing flats and stuff. I didn't get why y'all had slides, why y'all kept good shoes in the car, why y'all wear the heels just for the picture and you take it off. Fantasia, I see you. I understand you. Perfect timing. Yeah. So my feet hurting, Rob, mm-hmm. and I'm tired. Okay. I was lit the whole party. You know, kid, I'm in here. 
we keeping the party going. Okay. I was bowling. I, I've never party with you because of the you, 9 o'clock thing. Because of the 9 o'clock. Yeah. It's a very rare occasion. Yeah. But it, and also, the party started at 8, and I was there at 8 because the food was going to be there at 8. Okay. So that's four hours. See, of, that's where your nap could have came in. Right there. You, you kept on stage. But you I, don't got to open up the party. You don't got to set up. See that's you don't got to set up me, no Rob. more. You right, but I, I you trying anxious. to prove you real? Not even and that. Like, I you feel like no, nah, nah, I was here. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> I came at eight o'clock. No, nah, get some Versace shades. <laughs> go take a nap. Come back. Come in late. My anxiety will not allow me to show up to things. Tell them turn the lights down when I walk what? in. <laughs> get the spotlight on me. We getting bottles. I don't drink, but you know somebody will. Somebody have a little bit of that. I don't know yeah, what you call it. Yeah. Hey. Uh, uh, say what, What's got a comma on it? Casa Migos. What's coming with the sparkler? Yeah. Just, I want some attention in my area. Right, I'm right. that type of person. Yeah. But I run out. <laughs> okay. So by the time that video happened, mm -hmm. I'm done. So wait, did you post the video first? So, so my friend Marcus, yeah. arch enemy, he was like, yo, Kev, you, you sleepy. And I was like, I'm good, bro. He was like... You, you, I'll tell you, you're tired. I'm like, bro, I'm good. Yeah. He said, I see your face. Mm -hmm. So I was, I'm gonna put my sunglasses on. He was like, no, man, because if you have your sunglasses on, you still sleepy from the bottom part of your face. It's gonna show. Right. So I'm telling him I'm cool. I don't realize what my face looks like. Mm -hmm. So he's like, all right, man. I think he going to the party, get something to eat. He going to just he yeah. records me mm. and sends it to me. And I was like, oh, so this is what y'all was seeing, right? Because you, you just kind of like slumped <laughs> over. <laughs> And and then, I gave like, exactly four shimmies. I got a shimmy, na 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 na. That's all I got. That's all I got. I don't got no old school moves. I don't got no snake. I don't got no get out my seat. I just got I gave na 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 na. That's it. I gave exactly mm -hmm. four shoulder shakes. Okay. When that happened, I said, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. All Which right. I thought was gracious. Because you've heard this is how we do it before. I know you've been in the spot and this is how we do it has played before. <laughs> that was a courtesy dance move right there. Courtesy. Like, hey, this is for the cause. For, this is, this for... is deeper than Montel. Montel can sit one out for sure. <laughs> this is for y'all. This is for the people. This is for the people. And I, bro, I watched that video back after that four <laughs> shakes. Yeah. And Shana and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm even more tired now than I was. Yeah. And it was just, it was very funny. For for all of us aging club goers, like, like, you, like you put in perspective so much. There's been so many times where I felt like that. There's so yeah. many times, especially in this new era where, like, People are just smoking hookah. Nobody's dancing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people just rapping the words. Yeah. But none of the songs got like they you got know. Nothing. I don't. I'm starting to not know the songs, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, man, had I drove, I'd have more power. Had I had I drove, I I definitely would have more juice right now. Oh my god! And the funny thing about it, Rob, I've seen so many funny comments. Like, mm -hmm. we're comedians, so right. it's our job to be funny. But what I love about the internet, everybody's hilarious at one point in time. Okay, somebody I like said, how you put that. Everybody could be funny. Yeah, even you could be an engineer, you could be mm -hmm. a nurse, you mm -hmm. work at McDonald's. But for that moment in time, you got that joke off. I don't know you. Right. You could be Dave Chappelle. You could be George Carlin. Mm -hmm. Somebody said Kevin looked like he's trying to remember where he put his birth certificate. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I know what that means exactly. at the same time. And right. You know those thoughts randomly hit you like, yeah, did I? Yeah. Because you know I got the trap. I got you, that drawer. I tell I nobody go in it. <laughs> it's so but what if somebody <laughs> went in it? What if I went in it? And I forgot I did. That's also funny. So I knew I was doing your podcast today. Mm -hmm. And I knew you told me before. But I was like, I'm not doing nothing on Monday, and I don't usually do anything on Monday, so I'm going to tell myself 3.30, trick myself. Okay. So that if I forget, I still got time to scramble and be here on time. All right. Forgot I tricked myself. Okay. Got here at 3.15. Ooh. Think I'm throwing you off. I'm actually 45 minutes early. Okay. Patent to hear her in here so much. So as you age, you trick yourself, forget you tricked yourself, now you're just early. But because of my anxiety, I'm like, oh, cool. Now I'm, I'm gonna beat Rob here. Yeah, this is even better. Yeah, so that's where I'm. That's why we're standing where we are. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know that. You, you, you. 
Yeah. yeah. You got some secret rooms or I, something. I got you know. Some secret rooms. Yeah. I didn't even know you was here. That's crazy. I was in the back watching TikToks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do wonder about that. I do wonder, like, because you are so normal. And I feel like if I posted as much as you post, mm-hmm. I would not I would no longer be a normal person. You you I would no longer be like like a functional human being. Like like the way you interact and respond in real life, like I feel like if I would text you, I don't expect like the speed in which you respond. Like I would expect that from Liam Neeson, because I'm like, he's got downtime. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if I, yeah, you know, they only do taking movies so often. Every once in a while. He got plenty of time. Plenty but when I text time. Kev, I'd be like, he really be texting me back like a normal person. I am normal. That's my crazy. Phone be in my hand. That's crazy. Ever since I met you, <laughs> I have doubted you because of how normal you are. When I met you, I was like, this guy's not gonna make it. <laughs> High school sweetheart, beautiful kids. Why would he make it in comedy? This is so goofy. <laughs> what is wrong? What is wrong with him? He's not gonna make it out of Washington. His his family is beautiful. I watch the dark side of comedy. I watch E True Hollywood Story. I never miss one. No one just starts off with a beautiful family, kids, and goes to church and then makes it. He had it all. Yeah. Until. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like this. This is crazy. Like, <laughs> man, I've I've doubted you so much, but I've been, I've been watching the whole time and been a fan. Cartoon Scandal. Dang, I love Cartoon Scandal. I would watch Scandal. I'd be out on the Thursday night doing comedy. I come home Friday morning. I watch Scandal. Then I head to your page, hoping that Cartoon Scandal was out. It was always out. You was on the West Coast. I was like, how you even get this out so I early? Staying up till three a.m. I'm thinking you're gonna be the next Aaron Magruder. <laughs> He's gonna be the cartoon guy. <laughs> I see you on YouTube and stuff. I'm like, I'm not watching it. It's like like Walt Disney at the beginning of a Disney movie. It's like, dog, I don't care what you really look like. Where the where the tunes at? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I like, see the kids. I'm like, oh, he's going to be Joe Jackson. <laughs> he's going to be Joe Jackson. The kid, I should be following the kids. That's what. That's where the content is. <laughs> then I start seeing you like, like pop up on like all deaf and stuff. I'm like, yo, he's, he's a legit funny person. He's gonna he's gonna be all right. Like like you were there at the Bay Area Black too. I together. was there at the Bay Area Black when I yes. bombed. Yes, that could have helped inform your mind too. Like, no, 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 no. Probably not gonna make it. It was somebody next to me that was like, "Hey man, Kev funnier than this man. Kev funny. <laughs> nah, like he hosts a show every week and he be coming up with different stuff every week. And when they said that to me, to me that registered is like, okay. That's somebody that, like, <laughs> they might not know how to showcase right now. For sure. But they they are legit funny, and they're going to figure out. Like, like I always felt like being prolific was important. Yeah. And yeah. I was, and, and, and hearing that you had that ro- reputation of being prolific, I was like, you know, I, I was like, that, I heard that about that's myself. there. That's there, for sure. So to answer you, yes, I did Nate Jackson's. I didn't host. He just let me do time. Mm-hmm. And, and because he had a lot of regulars, I was like, I can't do the same set every week because I see the same people. Right. So that helped me. But I was doing 20, 25 minutes every week. Mm. So the Barrier Black was my actually the only time I've ever done a showcase set. Okay. I've never done, I think it was like three minutes at the time, the first round, maybe five minutes. It wasn't a long time. Mm-hmm. Did not know that a showcase set is different than your regular stand-up set. Yeah. I didn't build it like that. And I went kind of early in. It was too late anyway. But yeah. I went kind of early in the night. So I didn't know. And I learned. And then I was just like, I'm not do this no more. Me, Kevin. Man, all stuff. I think you would have figured it out. Yeah. You would have figured it out how to, you know, address the elephant in the room, right, say right. who you are in five minutes, yeah. Maybe. have a hook, have a have a big joke at the end. Like I, I never mean, built a set like that. I think you would you would have figured it out and it you would have been fine. And also, you know, you would have got bored with it. Honestly. <laughs> if you did that, I think I think the way you are, you probably would have got bored with it. Maybe. Because that's what happens with a lot of people along the way. They're building that perfect set yeah. that's going to get them in the door. 
and they forget about just even why they started, right. what they were even trying to do with it, what mm-hmm. they, you know, they're just like, I, I just need to get in the door. Yes. And so, you know, you you made your own door. Made you my know, own door. Yeah, made said, your own do this door frame, again. you know what I'm saying? Yes. Doorknob, yeah, yes. everything. Put a little doggy door on there, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you done did it all. Like, you you the Tyler Perry of the internet. You know what? I just watched his documentary last night, me and Melissa, <clears throat> and Sylvester Stallone's documentary. I did, too. I watched Sly. Dog, sure. Sly yeah. was amazing. Yeah, I didn't know he was trained. I'm so used to, like, the people not being trained, and they're like, I fell in the movies, I learned how to read on set, and yes. now, you know, I shoot guns. He he was trained. He was trained. They were just like, dog, you look like you can lift stuff. <laughs> Why don't you just lift stuff in the back? He's like, man, I ain't. They never gonna cast me. <laughs> and he was right. Right. They never were gonna cast him for anything other than Thug till today. Yeah. If he didn't write Rocky and he demand. wrote Rocky. Roo, roo. <laughs> I wrote that. I wrote that. But that's the crazy thing about Rocky. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Sly. Your characters are so well done. I thought that was how you were. Yeah. This nigga is insightful. Yes. Everything he wrote had heart. He yeah. knew what he was doing. Why? I was like. You're way more of mm-hmm. a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. We, you know what it is? He's old school celebrity, where you yeah. didn't get to know them. He's not doing podcasts like that. Yeah. You know me through my work or my interviews or my mat. You don't know me for real, right? He, like, that's that era before us. We they weren't doing all this stuff. So right. I really, I was like, I don't know this man at all, and yeah. he is very. A very good filmmaker. I I heard that he wrote Rocky, he wrote Staying Alive, the uh, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. You know, he wrote the Rocky movies, mm-hmm. but I always thought that was a rumor. I thought he probably <laughs> I like, thought it was stole like, it or something and just took credit. He wrote it, but it's really like he signed a paper with the boxing gloves on. Like, yeah, no, bye, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Get that out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't even don't even untake me. I got it. Just give me the pin. Yeah, give me the pin. All right. Slow, slow. All right. Written by. Thank you. That visual is so good. <laughs> it's so hard to grip a pin. Right. Because it only has this. Yeah. He just, he just you know. Duh. Yeah. But nah, bro. He really. And he, bro, he. I almost cried. He had so many good uh, anecdotes and mm-hmm. metaphors. And he mm-hmm. said something that really hit me. He was like. Up until 40, life is about addition. You get up, you you find love, you get married, you have children, and then after 40, life is about loss. And the people you love start dying, and you start m- losing things. And I was like, <laughs> yo, I'm not, Rocky not supposed to be hitting me like this with the life, right. with the life questions. Yeah. Um, he got me analyzing life, like the social fabric of time. Put the statue back, man. What? Hey, y'all put that couch back in there. <laughs> I don't want to lose. <laughs> I was unprepared for yeah. this from Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, that no, nah, that's wild. It was amazing though. So I forgot what we started talking about. This. Oh no, I, the Tyler Perry thing. I saw so much of myself in him and Sylvester Stallone, and mm-hmm. how they were just like. And I realized this about myself. I really don't like people telling me what, <laughs> what to do on yeah. creative stuff that I know what I'm doing with. Right. So, like, I was just into it today with one of my employees. We was fussing about, you know, a graphics package. And I'm like, this is why it matters. And he was like, well, the executives are this. And I'm like, bro, I don't, I'm, I'm, executives ain't not who I'm making this for. Right. I'm making this for people who went through this. They get it. I don't care if the executives don't get it. They are not the person I'm making this for. Yeah. I'm making this for people who grew up like me. Mm. They will get it. And I, be, and I always end up getting frustrated because I'm like, bro, this 10, 12 executives who see 100 shows, whatever, they not the person. And Tyler Perry was like, he was on that same, like, Facts. I'm talking to the people. Not mm-hmm. Hollywood, not the award shows, just the people who I'm making this for. And he wrote that ideology to a billion dollars. And he never even was like, I'm going to be inclusive of other cultures. He was yeah. like, black stuff, Medea, <laughs> church stuff. Yeah. Run it back. Mm-hmm. He never switched it up. I mean, he creatively he did other roles, but his bread and butter was the Tyler Perry Studios universe. So I was like, "Yes, I agree with you." That, no, that, it's great. It's great. I, I'm so thankful for Keep Your Distance mm-hmm. as a, as a platform. You know, you really like 
shared your platform with so many comedians. You yeah. put on so many comedians. There's got to be one or two that you didn't even like, but you were like, you know what? I For still sure. got to put this person on, even though, you know. Certainly. Me aside. Me aside. Me aside in my hey, personal hey. taste. Hey, we're yeah. all going through it right now. This, yes. is, this is a platform for everybody. You be knowing stuff, Rob. I, I'm just guessing. Because you, uh, you put on so many people. It's like, <laughs> Kev can't like us all. I don't, know who, I don't know who Kev likes and doesn't like, but there's no way he likes all of us. That's just percentages. That's just probability. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's just Vegas odds. That, I, I really, I have, I have no inkling in, in who you like or who you don't like. But I, I did at the time. I was scared. I was like, okay, Kev's trying to set us up. Kev's trying what? to get us. We, he knows we're rusty. He's gonna catch us when we're down. He's trying to get us to bomb in front of his audience so they see him as the superior comedian. I, I was calling other comics like, hey, keep what? your distance. Is it on the up and up? What do you think? Did what? they set you up? Was there trap doors? Was what's going on? They were like, nah, Rob, like it's like it's good. You're gonna get a lot of followers. I was like, sure. Okay. All right. What about zooming with the homies? What about that? Was, <laughs> Did you just have a whole bunch of pictures on your wall? I was, I was like, then I met Brennan. Yeah. Once I met Brennan, I was like, oh yeah, it's the setup is in. This it's the long game we're playing here. Cause, cause Brennan talks to us crazy. You know, like, but he be playing. But I'll be like, yeah, no, see, that's that's really how everybody is around here. That's that's the real, that's the real. Uh, <laughs> you are so funny, Rob. That's why I was jealous you hadn't asked me to be on this for so long. That's crazy. I was like, this because... nigga went through everybody. I I check my phone, I text you about something else, make sure the numbers hadn't been wrong. No, no, I was scared to ask you. What? Because because first of all, first of all, when people see that I'm in the studio. They assume that this is a Kev on stage production. <laughs> they assume you own the podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like there's a lot of assumptions going on. That I own the so, podcast? Yeah, yeah. So I I I wanted to separate the podcast from Kev on stage for a minute because I didn't want anything that I said or my guest said <laughs> to blow back. I don't want I I want to support this place. When you put right. out I was I wasn't even thinking about doing a podcast. Mm. When you put out that Instagram post and you was like, "Hey, if you want to make something, make it here." And you had to like the ad or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that and I was like, "Yo, you do want to make things." <laughs> And you don't know the people who know the technical side. Right. You don't want to do your own technical side. Mm -hmm. Who does? Right. So I was like, okay, I can I can afford to do that. Mm -hmm. And so then I did it, and then it ended up being like a like a new thing, and like yeah. people were like, oh, we're happy Rob is podcasting again. They're funny. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's You're a, one of the funniest people, and everybody loves you. I don't like that narrative. It's the truth. I don't like that narrative. You're coming down soon. Eventually, we will turn on you. Right. But right now? I needed to be the right person, though. Yeah. The person that doesn't like me, I needed to, every time they don't like me, it it helps. <laughs> I need that person to be be <laughs> in the shade room, the spiritual word, all the time. Like, when, when one of them people got beef with me, and then, like, every time they talk about me, I get uh. I get defended in the comments and tagged and stuff. Yeah, that's what I need. I got plenty of people not popping who probably, you know, yeah, yeah, that's don't, true. Got issues with me, but yeah, <laughs> I need a popping person to really just, you know, I I just grind their gears. That's too funny, man! <laughs> oh my god, that's a inconsistent podcast, man. Yeah, why is it called that anyway? It's called the inconsistent podcast because you know it comes out whenever it it's ready. Oh, it's not I didn't want to be. Schedule? I didn't want to be beholden to like. Oh, people like it's Saturday. Where's the pod? <laughs> it's Wednesday. Now you know Wednesday at five in the morning. I download the pod, go back to sleep, wake up and listen to it. Why would you do me like that? <laughs> and so I didn't want that. And it, yo, people have been behaved. <laughs> I I I tested them. I went twelve days without posting a pod, and no one confronted me about it. I was like, ooh, the brand is getting really strong. We getting really strong. I didn't have one in the bank. Just so y'all know, I didn't have. I well, I had one in the bank, but it wasn't cut together. It's a short staff over here. The inconsistent pot. It's it's really me. Oh my Sometimes God. the sound be messed up. I'd be like, oh yeah, it's the brand. 
<laughs> people I was like being inconsistent about anything. Yeah, quality. I heard duration. I heard a clicking sound. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, somebody must have met, left the metronome on. You know, man, <laughs> them editors crazy. <laughs> it's me. I'm them editors. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> Kev, where, where are you from originally? I hate this question. Okay, I'm gonna tell you where I'm from, but I hate this question. Be, being a military brat, mm. this question, and I realize now how small of a subset of people we are. Mm-hmm. Because in my life, it was everybody was military brats, but everybody's hardly anybody is military brats. Okay, so. Most people are born in a place and they live there until they go to college and they move or they get a new job. That's that's some mil- military brat assumption. That's but when I ask people where they're from, they very rarely say, Well, you it's never it's I'm from here. They've whittled it down to the very simplest way to say Okay, it. maybe that's true. Yeah. So I was born in El Paso, Texas. Okay. I lived there from eighty three to ninety three. That's ten years. Yeah. Okay. Move from there to Virginia. to doggy style. Yes. El Paso. Yes. Move from there to Virginia for a year. North Carolina for three years. Back to El Paso for a year. Then Washington State for 13 years. Okay. When I got on the internet and people started knowing who I was, I was in Tacoma. Yeah. So like, where are you from? Well, I've been living here. I don't really want to go back to where I was a child at. So I'm, I'm from oh. Tacoma. So now... There's always this debate. Well, he from Washington. No, he from El Paso. I was I was born and raised in El Paso, but I became a man in Washington. So I never know what to say. I usually just say my dad was in the military. I don't feel like going into all that. Interesting. Yeah, and it's so annoying to me. It's such a small thing. But no, it's not. I think that I think that's why you're able to be relatable to so many people all over the country. You think because so? Because you have a little bit of all over the country in your upbringing. You know what? There could be some truth to that because in addition to that, military brats and military schools are easy mm. because usually it's a lot of military schools. Okay. But when you're a military brat in a place where they are not military brats, then you got to make friends all over again and you got to yeah. make friends with people who've known each other their whole life. Yes. So like when I was back to El Paso in 10th grade, I wasn't in a military school again. Mm-hmm. So they've been knowing each other since 1983. They're all my age, but they never moved. They've been in this neighborhood, went to middle school together, now they're mm-hmm. in high school together. And I'm like from Fayetteville yeah. at this time. So I got to, you know, I'm basically doing material almost to make new friends and stuff. And same gotcha. thing in Washington. I had a lot of military kids, but also that school was not a military school. So mm. there's half military kids, half regular kids. So it was a whole thing. Got you. It's a whole thing, Rob. I don't. I mean, I don't think it's like a like a, a conscious thing, but I, I do think that that yeah, because I didn't know that. So yeah. I'm I'm seeing you as Tacoma mm-hmm. and thinking, okay, everybody in black people in Tacoma sound like Kev on stage, <laughs> and no. that might not be true. Tacoma takes a lot of their personality, Tacoma and Seattle, from the Bay Area. Okay, because the Bay is the coolest part. Closest to Washington. Mm-hmm. So they will say it's them. That's but... crazy. They got to jump over a whole nother state. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, Forget uh, or... Portland. <laughs> no. Uh, the Bay Area. Nothing I'm about sorry. Oregon <laughs> says, let me bring this on with you. Yeah. But they call, you know, the Bay, they call, you know, uh, I think it's San Francisco, the town, or Oakland, the town. I'm not sure mm-hmm. which one. And Seattle, like, you want to come from Tac Town, man. You know where the town is. And I was like, this is a city that it, it's very obvious there's another city not far from here that is the town. Yeah. But I'm new here. I don't want to ruffle feathers. Mm-hmm. But uh, most people from Tacoma, Seattle, talk like they are from Oakland, Bay Area. Hyphy movement, all that stuff yeah. was very big in Washington. We all appropriated the hyphy movement. We was all it going down. It was a lot of parking lots where people were trying to ghost we ride ghost, the whip. I ghost rode the whip in yeah, the church parking lot. Your ride. whip? My, my, my Chevy, I had a Chevy Lumina. Okay. And I was ghost riding? Yeah. I, I was... Yeah. I was doing. I was thin facing. Okay, I was going dumb. Okay. Jesus Christ had dread, so shake him. Yeah, I don't got none, but I'm planning on growing. Still. Come on, imagine all the Hebrews going dim. Yeah, what a great line. He don't know right. Jesus had dread, but he could have. It's very possible. He didn't know. He didn't know. But he it's a put good it assumption. out there as a possibility. <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? No, no, like, like, like KRS One was like, "Yo, <laughs> Jesus was black," but like E40 is like, "I don't know." You know. Maybe. He had dreads. Yeah. So shake him. 
He was certain. Yeah. I don't got none, but I'm playing. Like, that's just a very, and then he did grow him. And then he did. Props he's a, to E40. He's I didn't even man. know he could grow hair. I thought that was Cap. In 06, I was like, ain't no way E40 grow. No way. <laughs> no way. Sprinkle Me might have been about his hair. I ain't know. <laughs> then he had the dreads. I was like, dang, he was, he was really living his rap. He really was. That was really what he was thinking about at the time. I think that's so. That's why it's such a funny lyric to yeah. me. It's like a stream of consciousness. Like, yeah. I don't got nothing, but I'm planning on growing some. I plan some. on growing some. <laughs> it might not work out for me. It, it's, it's late in the game for me to be growing dreads. Him and Jay-Z. But these are my plans. Yes. Late dread, dreads grower, growers. Yeah. Late dreads growers. What, what would you do late? Grow dreads if I could, honestly. Yeah, if I could, I, I would seen just... you with the wig, with the cornrow wig. You then, and y'all better be lucky. I haven't found somebody who will install it for real, and it don't take like months. The only reason I haven't got it fully installed, two reasons: you got to grow your hair enough so they can glue it, and then it takes like two or three months to take off. I just want to make a couple videos and be done with it. And it was really expensive. It was like three, five, three to five thousand dollars for the whole yeah. process. I want to be funny for a little bit, and then I got something else to do. I'm not going to wear you. that to my son's parent-teacher conference. Yeah. It's not funny <laughs> at that place or at soccer tournaments. Mm-hmm. I can't do everything with it. I just want to make a couple of funny videos and move on with my life. I feel like you're a bald icon. I don't know if you <laughs> can really just switch it up. I don't know. I feel like people know you as, as, as a bald guy. But the thing is, if I did, I wouldn't even fake the grow out. Mm-hmm. I would just come with the full locks. Full little Duke starting five fro, yeah, and not say nothing, and then that's just me. People would see my picture from yesterday, be like, "Wasn't that you?" I don't know, man. This is me now. Wow, that's how I would hit him up with it. Mm. Or the full waves, I could go the full waves. I looked into that. Okay, where you could they roll it down and glue it, but I just I didn't feel like the time. Yeah, but I did research it. I talked to special barbers. I was I was almost there. I feel like you should just let it do what it do. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Like if I if I ever get a Sherman Hemsley, that's gonna be me. No. I'm gonna be. I, I say that now because <laughs> you got the full head and you still got the. Ks, ks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you what? 38, 37? Uh, I'm 35. 35? Yeah, yeah. Ks, ks. That's I, great. I, I, I look bad out here, huh? No, I mean, <laughs> turn to the side. Oh, you're good. You're gonna have it for a long time. I, I hope so. I hope I I hope I go gray first. Yeah, you're going gray like, right like, there. Like like fine. Steve Martin. Yes. Like where people like dog. I, I always thought Rob was old. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know. I, like I start looking old when I'm young, right. and then I just be old for like 30 years straight. Sam Jackson. Yeah. Morgan Freeman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, De Niro never really looked young to me. Even okay. like Reggie Bull, I'm like. Right, right. Taxi driver. Is Taxi like, driver, yeah. he could have been 45. Yeah, dog, you too old to be killing them people, dog. Right. <laughs> Go home, man. Right. <laughs> Kev, I think, I think what I admire about you is that um, I, I think that you have a, a niche community mm-hmm. that you tap into, but then you have so many sensibilities outside of that that I think other people, you know, like some people like, oh, if I got this community, I'm going to milk that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, no, Kev's also politically astute. Also, he watched the same shows we watched growing up. Also, he's got, you know, similar nostalgia. Also, you know, he's out here pulling up the LinkedIn of of rap blogs and stuff. (laughs) Man, that was some of the most amazing (laughs) investigative work. Like, that was like, yeah, dog. Black people, we don't have a John Oliver to just be pulling the car to these people. Like, yeah, I looked up everybody, and this is what they, this is the headshot they put out. This is on their social Tyler media. Tyler Perry. They had a dude named Tyler Perry. Yeah. And he was a white male. Come on, man. I was really just pissed off at that. Right. Because they had been reporting erroneously a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, these don't, they got black names, but they're not feeling like, they're feeling like, you know how like they say uh, Gen Z slang is Gen Z slang. It's really just black kids. It's just A A V E. It's just yeah. black stuff. Yeah. But because everybody co-ops it, and co-ops it early, and they co-opt it early, it becomes Gen Z slang. But it's really not. Mo- uh, so much of lingo, lingo, and language starts with black gay men, mm-hmm. then goes to black women, yeah. then goes to overall black people, then it's co-opted by young white people. Yeah. And that's I was just talking to my wife about this. I think the reason black language is always moving forward is because when too many people catch on to us, we we are like that's dead now. Yeah. 
bling bling. Once the dude was like little, the Robin Leach dude was like, look, look at Wayne's blinged out house. We were yeah. like, that is dead. That is dead. We can't be saying what y'all are saying. Mm-mm. So Mm-mm. now we need another word. And mm-hmm. that's why we're always evolving. We're always evolving. So that's why you can always tell when those pages aren't real because it's always a half step back. Mm-hmm. Or it feels like somebody adjacent, somebody knew somebody black said something. I'd be like, y'all yeah. don't even know what y'all talking about. And they didn't know how much we love Jamie Foxx. And that's why I was pissed off. It's just yeah. content to them. That nigga, that is Jamie Foxx. That's, that's Willie Beeman. That's Jamie Foxx. That's Willie Beeman. I might Beeman. need secu- security. That's mm-hmm. Wanda. Like, we've been knowing about Jamie for our whole life. We didn't just yeah. find out about him on Baby Driver. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for companies like that, it's just content. And that was his life we was talking about. Yeah. And they just reporting on his content. Then I was like, nigga, who is who over here? Right. And I, I, I checked up. I said, no, nah, I ain't seen no black face on Come the on. whole thing. Yeah. But I was just pissed off that day. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I just, man, the internet has really, over the last, I've been talking to somebody about, over the last five years, Rob, I've seen it happen too fast. It's like, crazy. The TikTok girl will do the, bl- the dance that a black girl does not as good. And she'll be on Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, but also TikTok will pick up that video and send it to everybody. 1,000%. And she's then they'll not a, watch she, it. She's not alone in the problem. No. Right? She And she's just doing what TikTok does. But TikTok is like, oh, a black girl? No. No. A white girl doing a black dance? Yes. Yeah. And then the brands will pay her. And mm-hmm. the black girl who pay, who created that, get, the girl who created On Fleek, she don't make a dime. Yeah. But Sephora's like, want to be on fleek? Like, nigga, y'all don't even know where this came from. Mm-hmm. So I be getting pissed off at that. And that's why I did this for black people anyway, because y'all ain't going to catch our stuff. If I'm onto it, then I'm going to say something about it. Yeah. Kim Kardashian had boxer braids. <laughs> nigga. Sorry, can I say nigga on this? Yeah, oh, okay. you can. Okay. I'm, I'm surprised you did, but you can. <laughs> yeah. Why are you surprised at that nigga? I felt bad that I the, the F word was in the rap song I played. I was like, dang, I'm, re- I'm really messing up. I should have... <laughs> I should have got the edited version. I was scared to curse on the podcast. I was like, I can't, be, I can't be cursing in this building, this cab building. You know, Keep Your Distance actually allowed me to move beyond that cussing. Okay, not okay. Cussing. It was a wrestle of the spirit, though. I, I mean, I don't curse in my act. And I like when I'm working out stuff, I, I try to keep mm-hmm. profanity out of there just because I, you know, I want to cast the widest net yep. as far as like getting my content out there but it's not like a like a moral thing yes i i i hear that yeah but keep your distance i what people were asking they thought because of who i was they couldn't cuss and i was really like oh i'm gonna offend the church people but i was like bro i cannot ask a comedian to work clean if they don't work clean because yeah. then i can't have them they will do it but they they're not gonna put their best foot forward right and i watch dirty comedy Mm-hmm. So now I'm really against hypocritical stuff a lot. Mm. Church people will be making me mad because they're like, you can't cuss, but they be watching the same shows I watch that have cussing. Yeah. So I'm like, it's going to have cussing. If you don't want to watch it, that's fine. Yeah. But y'all talking about power, Game of Thrones too, but you don't want these comedians to cuss? So I was upset about that. So I was like, man, let people rock. And it was a better show because of it. I mean, it, it was great. It was great to share your platform yeah. with with so many comics and so many people got to see us do stand up in front of an audience that we don't normally get yep. of of people who, you know, kind of, you know, like like I would I would say a sophisticated <laughs> black crowd that that you know, they they don't see comedy in some of the venues we be in we be in right now right. you know what i'm saying like it's the people that are like oh i i see comedy in the theater yeah, yeah. i see comedy you know i see the biggest comedians yep. when they come to town so it was it was cool for us to reach those people yeah and and also get feedback in real time yes you know uh yeah it was amazing it was and, good times yeah <laughs> we I don't know why these keep making me laugh Cause um, your face don't match the sound of it. You're just like air horn, air horn, hey, air horn. You know, I, I'm not in control of all of that at once. You know what I'm saying? You gonna get the face you gonna get while I'm while I'm looking for the sound. Oh my god. Uh, so Kev, uh, you grew up in the church. Yes. How does that work with the military brat? So you are constantly in the different churches. So again, back to my first thing. The first ten years of my life, it was the same church. Okay. So, and we never went to church on military basis. Mm. No disrespect, but they was not black church the way black church be black church because they got a time limit. Because military bases have to have 
four or five different services. They got to have Catholic mass, yeah. Lutheran, then black church. Usually black church was last, but mm -hmm. you can't be there all day. So my parents always found a black church. So, yes, when I was a kid, kid, all my memories were church. And we went to church on, no joke, not a lie, Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday service, go home and eat, come back for night service, Monday off. Tuesday night we had uh, Bible study or evangelistical service. Thursday night I had Bible study. Friday night I had choir rehearsal. I wasn't in the choir, but my mom was there, the babysitter, so we was playing in the church. Saturday morning, junior choir rehearsal, that's what I was part of. Okay. And then you're back to Sunday morning. So only Monday and Wednesday was the only day that I didn't go to church for 10 years. The first 30 years of my life, I didn't miss Sunday service but three times. Wow. Once was probably the Sunday I was born that week. One was <laughs> that counts. That's in the three. <laughs> that was one of the three. That's crazy. I would have been. I would have went to church, but you know, I, I, I was. I was doing something. <laughs> I was doing something. Coming to Earth. <laughs> yeah. Another time we went to New Orleans for Thanksgiving and we couldn't make it. And then I think one more time we moved to Washington. It was just we hadn't found the church yet. Yeah. But, but then like it felt when we went on vacation, we went to church in that city. Okay. Often our vacations were councils and conventions so mm -hmm. we would go out of town to go to church and this this wasn't even bad this was like oh my god we going to we going to yeah. phoenix yeah we going to albuquerque mm -hmm. we going to go crazy at church man we going to go to village <laughs> <laughs> going to village yeah. we yeah. going to chicago this year mm -hmm. so the the church was a huge part of my upbringing mm -hmm. then i was a youth pastor later in life um and then i moved here i didn't really stop going to church until i started touring yeah. Because I was gone every weekend. And then the pandemic when church. Mm. But basically, that's the only reason I didn't go as much is because I was on the road. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's truly amazing. Yeah. Like, church, I, when I say church boy, I'm a church boy. That's why I yeah. play instruments because we were there so much. I was like, I want to learn to play the drums. And then I play the bass or the keyboard. It was all you church. You play instruments? I play instruments. I'm not really good at any of them. Okay. I'm the best at the, I was the best at the bass. Okay. I was solid at the drums. I was terrible at the keyboard and piano. Mm. That's just hard to do. It's too hard to do two, two different things at once. Yeah, yeah, And I yeah. was never a crazy good drummer, but I was a pretty solid bass player. When, okay. When I was in my bag for real, yeah. I was. Tambourine? No. You know, no. I feel like that's very. Tambourine was kind of a. Uh, Growing up the way I did, mm -hmm. only people who were good at tambourine was women and mostly women. Okay. So my friend group was like, nigga, don't play the tambourine for real. Like, you can Got play you. around with it, but yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you can't play it for real. Because mm -hmm. there's a certain stereotype that goes along with men who are good at the tambourine. I got you. When I was growing up. Yeah, okay. So I purposely was, you know, and you, when you're young, you just following along. You don't know what's wrong, right, That's or true. Different. That's real. He's like, your brother, like, don't play the tambourine. Uh, 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 my grandma was killing it. No, yeah. nigga, you learn the drums. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so I play the drums. So Got you. Got but you. most church kids, they, they be playing instruments, especially the boys. They be playing them instruments. Yeah. That, if you really went to church like I did, you, you often play instrument or sing. See, I, w I went to church, but my... My family was Catholic. Oh, my God. So, like, black and Catholic in Atlanta, you might as well worship the devil. What? Like, 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 it's so Bible Belt. It's so, like, they're preaching about the Catholic church at everyone One, else's church. Well, because church. nothing else is... You, Meanwhile, you, I'm out of church, home, watching the Falcons. Everybody else is at church. Nobody can come out and play. They're all gone. I'm at home chilling. I need to understand how you were a black Catholic in Atlanta. Yeah, no, because there are black Catholics in the Midwest for sure. For sure, there are black Catholics, Boston? you know, New Orleans, of Boston. Course. But in Atlanta, that's like being an alien. What? What happened? My parents are not from Atlanta. Okay. My parents are. My roots are. You know, my parents are from Kentucky. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So they got it. They were Catholic. You know, they grew up with other black Catholics. I went to a, a Catholic church that was dang. Uh, you know. Off of Bankhead, like it's a black, <laughs> like it was created during the civil rights movement. You know what I'm saying? A like Catholic it was church off of Bankhead. Yeah, yeah, we would be Christmas caroling and Bankhead and everything. Really? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's a totally different church right, experience. Right by the Blue Flame. Hilarious. Our priest would get food at a food truck 
that was really close to the blue flame. It was a big controversy, and he had to explain like, "Hey, don't don't judge. You know, we wow. we, we know not to judge each other. You guys got to try this food truck." <laughs> If you eat at this food truck, you will see why I would be in a parking lot near the strip club. Atlanta I am not club. there at all. Nah. This food is busted. They are notoriously <laughs> famous for having good food at the strip club. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wanted to go myself. It's a couple of issues with it. Hey, yeah, but we nah, did a you, food show. And we you got to be low if you go. You yeah. can't wear the Versace shirt. No, oh, God. You, I would you're, never. Not trying to, you're not trying to go viral. You would never. You know. I don't yeah. even think I could go to a show club now, especially in Atlanta. If they you, probably if you put me. on a hoodie that says, I'm just here for the wings, then they'll be like, oh, this is a bit. It's mm-hmm. a bit. He's it's a doing bit. a bit. For sure. He's doing a bit. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. But I've heard the food is good. We had wings from Magic City. They were amazing. Yeah. But I've heard people eating steak and salad. Eating a salad mm-hmm. in the strip club is a very funny visual to me. It's it's pretty wild. Putting ranch on something yeah. while cheeks are adjacent. Right. Wings make sense. Fries make sense. But ranch dressing? It's a lot of black lights in the strip club, That's though. You could, like, hold the salad up to the black light and be like, oh, yeah, nah, this is good. This is good. I don't even see any pesticides or anything. This They should ah! they should have this at the salad bar. I don't understand. <laughs> Can the Patreon hear this? Can they, yeah. can they can hear these random yeah. sound? They can't hear the A? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Patreon, man. Y'all pulled up on Shout me. Shout out to the Patreon, man. Yeah. Also, you know, watch this again. Yeah, that's why I wanted to go on. That's why I wanted to go also, on Patreon. Like, watch it again. I be trying to expose people. Yeah. The Patreon is where it's at. Okay. My Patreon is yeah. it's where it's at, Rob. I got you. Patreon has hit me up and be like, yo, your Patreon is crazy. Oh, that's dope. They're like, your community is crazy. Okay. But even, I'm, I'm a platform sharer, man. 594, and I didn't even tell them I was doing Come it. On. Come on. Because I didn't know, if, you know, the internet, I, I can't tell them if it ain't going to be for show. Yeah. So 594, and most of my Patreon is East Coast. Now, if, if I was work, if they was at work, we'd have a thousand people in here. Mm. One thing them people don't do oh, is yeah, work. Some of them people are off. What? They yeah, off? The game is, is on? Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. Mm-hmm, I didn't even realize mm-hmm. it was Thanksgiving week when I told you yes. Yeah. I got to look better at my but calendar. But you also is like, I, I'm i shutting it down after right. Thanksgiving. And I was like, yo, yeah, Kevin on another this level is, now. This week is That's it. what the industry be telling me. That's what... <laughs> That's what I'd be like, yo, I thought I thought of the best show to pitch. They'd be like, yeah, wait till January, buddy. <laughs> it's over with, buddy. It's over with. After, after Wednesday, low-key, it's over. But I'm like, what about the strike? We was on strike. None like, of that hey, matters, hey, man. Hey, hey, None of that you matters. You better eat some turkey. Them folks and the people, <laughs> them, them execs, yeah. they didn't get hurt during the strike. Right. We was the ones that right. was getting hurt. They was getting paid. They were getting paid. Email clean. <laughs> First time the the app said zero in a long time. You know what I'm saying? They they up there. Oh. It's just lunch orders. That's it. Like all right, Lord. let me put my lunch order in. <laughs> man, I was man. I hey. dog. It was tough, man. Mm-hmm. I had to turn. I had to really be a man of integrity. Yeah, because them movie things they was offering money outrageous amounts oh i said y'all really want me to be a scab they was right. like y'all ain't never ever offered these amounts right and oh it, they was going crazy were you did you ever think about it no were you ever Let's like you, you know what you know what i have my own app Mm-mm. we good over here no. <laughs> sony got me you know no. what i'm saying my boys at paramount i know they got me listen i ain't even <laughs> inside good like that <laughs> Like the only thing reason I really got hurt is for the brand deal, mm-hmm. but people never forget if you did them wrong, right? And people would have known if I broke the, you would have yeah. to give me a billion dollars, yeah. Because folks you, was never going for Kev crossed the line. Yeah, you see what they did to Drew Barrymore, right? They threw her on the grill. Yeah, she was like, and she was like, it's other people not working who ain't about to be Duh. guapped up. Jennifer yeah. Hudson was like. You know what? I'm gonna take off too. Yeah, Drew Barrymore yeah. went and took that L for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I'm not y'all ain't finna come at me and be like you crossed the line. Mm-mm. Yeah, Mm-mm. but it hurt though. Hey, who they stung? That's what's up, man. Y'all yeah, couldn't do it. <laughs> Kevin on stage holding it down when he didn't have to. He's got his. <laughs> he's able to connect to the people directly and still 
was holding it down for, for the whole thing, Screen man. Actors Guild, the, you know? <laughs> the people directly is where it's at, Rob. Yeah. That's what Tyler Perry did. Yeah. No, Hollywood, I, and also, if y'all haven't watched this, Hollywood was like actively not knowing who Tyler was. They were doing it on purpose. Because he had broke records, and they were just like, who? It was until he got the studio. Then they were like, okay, who is this man? Hollywood be in different barbershops. They be in Florida The Hollywood barbershops, some of them don't even got TVs. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Forget a DVD player. Forget somebody coming in like, yo, I got this new stage play. It's, It's fire in the streets. Like, they... They got straight razors. They got all kind of scissors. They got all kind of stuff going on. You know, they got a towel on their face. They're not watching nothing. That's a good, that's a great analogy. (laughs) (laughs) They don't even know what you're talking about. They don't even know what you're talking about. Selling DVDs? What do you mean? Your barbershop sold DVDs? No, not the barbershop. All right, let me call the RIAA. (laughs) They're out here selling. Let me call the FBI. They're out here selling. And that's how Tyler was going going crazy was them bootlegs. Mm Mm-hmm. They brought them to school. Yes. Like testing week and stuff. <laughs> Teachers like, anybody got DVDs? I'm I'm bringing, you know, like Mike. Yeah. Kids like, get that out of here. <laughs> what is that, a kid's movie? We, the, the women are, are, they are loosed. If you, don't, if you don't put in Diary of a Mad Black Woman, if you don't put it in. That went platinum on the bootleg. Yeah. Can you imagine if they had the data for how many people watched that? Right. Because we was in living rooms. Of my, I remember we was in the living room of my pastor's church. I actually heard about Tyler Perry from his sayings before him. Mm. People was just saying the stuff he said in right. plays. I was like, what, what are y'all talking hello. about? This, hello. Yeah. Smith and Wesson, I hate. I, I did have a little falling out with Tyler. He don't know about this. But in one of his plays, one of the person was like, Kevin. Kevin. The mm. guy's name was Kevin. And the person kept saying it like that. Mm. And boy, when I tell you, my mother-in-law thought that was God's gift to comedy. And for a solid Man. eight years, she was always calling me Kevin. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dog, please stop. Please stop. And she wouldn't. It was too older black women. Tyler Perry, but he was that he was the king of the castle. I I had a moment like that. Uh the the B E T Ricky Smiley special. Mm-hmm. We miss Robert. <laughs> We miss Robert. Anywhere I go, we miss Robert. Yeah, there, there was that oh, hay in the go. middle of the barn. Oh, because the hay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoking on hay. Hey, hey. hey. They yeah. just turned hay to haze? They just, you know. It was close it was, enough? It was close enough. You know the funny close enough thing for me? Funniest close enough name story? Mm-hmm. My last name is Fredericks. Yeah. Kevin Fredericks. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> I pitched a movie to um, an executive at Awesomeness TV for my kids, right? Mm -hmm. Turned it in. He never read it. Two years later, he was like, you know what? I remember that movie. I thought it was from Kevin Federline. And I was like, I'm not reading a movie from (laughs) Kevin Federline. (laughs) He said he he never even turned over the title page. (laughs) An ally before Britney's book. He's like, Kevin Federline, get it out of here. Get that at and I worked so hard on it. And he was like, no. <laughs> he like literally said he tossed it in the trash. That's so because funny. Because he thought he saw a fetter lock. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, God. What a career. What a career. Uh, how many people think your your name is Kevon? <laughs> and when do you correct them? Because there are people named Kevon. There's, there's a guy on the Warriors named Kevon Looney. <laughs> A lot of people think my name is Kevon. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. They only know me from the internet. Mm-hmm. And it always tells me a few things. They only know me from the internet. Yeah. They're not in the Patreon. Mm-hmm. They're not a real huge fan, like deep, deep. Yeah. And they've probably never been to a show. Mm. But there's there's not a lot of reason to know. I don't say Kevin that often. Yeah. You know, Kevon stage is who I am. But my thing is, my name was Kevon. Kev on stage wouldn't make sense. <laughs> they think your last name is Stage. People think my last name is Stage. Yeah, Kev on Stage. Why does he capitalize the O? It'd be different. But that's Kev on. When people say they thought my last name was Stage, I always ask them, have you met anybody else whose last name is Stage? 
And the answer is always no. So I'm like, why did you think my last name was Kev on stage? <laughs> Jess with the mess. Her last name's with the mess. <laughs> that's that's what it is. Uh, I've had brands reach out to me, Kevon. We Kevon, love to work with you. Big fan. <laughs> Every time Kevon, I'm like, y'all shut up. That's Kevon right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Kevon stage. I got a very simple name, Kevin. Yeah, too much. It's too the much. Kev. It's, it's the, the Kev. Kev. They're not ready for the Kev. They're not ready for the Kev. They're man. not ready for the Kev. They're not ready for the mm-hmm. Kev. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I got one question I'm gonna ask you, and then we can get out of here. All right, cool. Uh, uh, what's your favorite color sky? Ooh, color sky. Yes. I don't think I've ever been asked that. Come on, only here on the Inconsistent Podcast. My favorite color sky. Yes. Okay. Can I have more than one? You can have more than one. You can okay. have as many as you want. All right. F- t- top. Top. Top, top. Mm-hmm. Sunset. Mm-hmm. Okay. Heavy oranges. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Top layer. Purple. Okay. Right? Purple Where they're orange. blending, mm-hmm. the purple and orange are, are at the top, mm-hmm. but it's a smooth blend. You can't really tell where the purple and orange yeah. stop and begin, yeah. but, you know, more purple up top mm-hmm. than the orange. Some blues in the back. Okay. Cup like this kind of blue, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. to the left, right? Mm-hmm. Right here where this is. Yeah. But that's in the background. Yeah. Okay, that's maybe what the day looked like. Okay. A little cloud cover for mm. some texture. Mm. Okay. And then it's like darkening, like a, some dark, rich blues here. Yeah. But not sunlight blue, like like the darkness is setting. Mm-hmm. So anytime it's more orangey and purple than blue, you're yeah. like, man, that's a sunset. Yeah. And big fan of gradients okay. of a sunset. Okay. Love a big gradient. Great. Okay, gradient. Okay. That's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Number two, pure, not a cloud in the sky. Perfect blue. And I mean, like, you're in Hawaii, and the water is blue, Mm -hmm. and the sky is also blue. Not Mm -hmm. a cloud in the sky, just Honolulu blue almost. Detroit Lions color is blue. Okay. But vibrant Honolulu blue. Yeah. Okay? Because Honolulu blue can be a little muted. Mm. Sometimes the Lions throw back jersey a little muted. Yeah. I want vibrant Honolulu blue, clear, crisp sky. Fire. Those are my two favorite skies. Okay. That's a great question. Yeah. No, I what asked most people that. I asked most people, that, I don't know. I think, you know, driving back, mm. you know, I see a lot of skies coming from, from <laughs> Kevin Stageville, United States of America. There's great purples here. Yeah. Also, yeah. outside of the color, big fan of mountains in the sunset. Mm-hmm. That's my perfect sunset. On our Discord, we have people posting sky pics. So really? when they see like a cool sky, they'll be like, "Oh man, I you know I posted, Got it. yeah, I saw this." I joined blah, the just, Discord just for that. Yeah, big fan yeah. of the sky. Mm-hmm. Big mm-hmm. fan of the sky. It's here. its own channel on on the Discord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin on stage. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. People have oh, been asking for you since day one. Day As one? They, of course. Of That's course. Good. The minute they saw the background, they're like, when when is Kev coming? I've seen so and many people here. I'm like, first of all, I need to talk to Rob because as a booker. I was scared. You know some people. You had people. Yeah. From, you had my favorite people from Southside on here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, I said, okay, now pe- they live in L.A. They know Rob. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, shout out shout out to the Southside. You know, sh- Southside Sherman's Showcase. We, you know, all fam. That's and how stuff. you know the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody love Rob Hayes. I mean, for now. For, for now. For now. <laughs> yeah. But any anytime somebody wants to jump ship, if they, you know, if they in the millions of followers, hate on, please. I'm trying to get people at shows. Uh, New Orleans. I'll be there December 9th. There you go. Come on through. Pull up on Rob. New yeah. Orleans. Yeah, I've never done comedy in the state of Louisiana. Really? Yes. Great I'm, state. Only only drank there. I've done never comedy done there. comedy there. New Orleans and Lafayette, Shreveport, okay. Lafayette, if you ever go there. Okay. Do not say Lafayette. They do not like that. All right. Two cities that hate you missing when their name. When Kev there, they be Lafayette because they be laughing. Nice. <laughs>
Lafayette and Norfolk. Also, black people don't do improv on the Kevin Coming stage out this app. week. It's coming out this week. Rob Hayes is featured. Yeah, I'm I'm in there improv Hadn't done improv in a long time. But you you're know? good at everything. Didn't comedy. tell anybody that when they were talking to me about the show. It's like, oh yeah, no, no, I do improv and hadn't done improv this decade, but still had a blast. It was so much fun. Met some really cool people that I've always wanted to meet. Always wanted them to like. Who did like, you meet that you were excited about? Um, the, the, so many people, <laughs> so many people. The, I can't, I can't name them all, but they were, they were incredible. <laughs> the best. Whoever you like the most when you watch the show, that's a person that I met and didn't know beforehand. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, man. that's funny. The yeah. whole the whole cast, whole cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Except for time. the people I clearly already know. Right. <laughs> Except for those people, but I was happy to be around those people as well. Oh man! <laughs> this has been the inconsistent podcast with Rob Hayes. You know the rules. It comes out when it comes out. <laughs> Kev didn't break the only rule. The only rule of the podcast, no Googling, no looking anything up. We never had any moments where we had to do that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Keep keep supporting Patreon. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Shout out to the people on Kev's Patreon. Shout out to the people oh, on Rob's man. Patreon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shout out, to, shout out to everybody listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher. Stitcher gone, ain't it? Okay. Well, hey. <laughs> All right, them links going somewhere. I got. All right, I got to make some calls. I feel like Stitcher. I got an announcement. They they folded. That makes sense. I just thought. I I just stopped. Thought I thought they stopped paying people. I didn't know they they just set yeah, up. I think shop. they folded, man. Okay. All right. Well, yo, whatever, whatever y'all on. If you if you listening, if you watching, if you rewatching, you know, yeah, just turn it on when you're doing mm-hmm. stuff. You don't gotta watch it. <laughs> That's still support. It really you just is. turn it on and th- and don't turn it off until like twenty five <laughs> minutes, and that would really help some numbers and, and some 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 files get spread oh around and stuff. God. All right, peace. That was a good time, Rob Hayes. Oh man, I try to have a good, good time. time. Yeah.